This is an awesome responsibility, my dear brethren, and with fear and trembling, I stand before you at this time, praying that I might be blessed with a portion of that spirit which has so inspired those who have preceded me. I want you to know that it's a great testimony to me to have had this opportunity during the past year to work under the direction of the general authorities of our great church. From a distance, I have sustained these men as prophets, seers, and revelators through faith. During the past year, it has been my privilege to meet with them in council, to feel of their spirit, to feel their wisdom, their love for you and the members of the church everywhere, to see their discernment and judgment, their ability to go to our Heavenly Father for answers to perplexing and difficult questions. And so I bear you my testimony that with every fiber of my body I know that as these men are called of God and as the mantle of authority falls upon them as they are ordained and set apart, that they are in very deed prophets, seers, and revelators receiving communication with God the Eternal Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. My appointment as Commissioner of Health Services for the Church gives me responsibility for the 14 hospitals which are owned and operated by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. In addition, I've been asked to be concerned and feel a responsibility toward the health needs of a worldwide church membership. And I would like to address myself during the brief portions of my talk to the needs of these brothers and sisters that live distant from this, the United States. May I share with you, just for a moment, several experiences that have come to me. I can't say that these experiences have been pleasing, that they have been associated with pleasure, because at times they're filled with sadness and almost overwhelming despair. And how wonderful it is to realize that only this church, the church restored in the latter days, has a solution to some of the overwhelming health problems that are faced by our brothers and sisters, the children of our Heavenly Father, who live in places far distant from here. How often we take for granted those things that we enjoy and participate in every day. The hospitals, the physicians, the dentists, the nurses, and other professional people who render services. Let me for a minute share with you a letter that came from the Philippine Islands from a dear sister there who pleaded, can our family share with you who live in the United States? the blessings of good health, of the primary children's hospital, and other places where we can go to keep our children healthy and strong. She told how it was necessary to go great distances to find clinics and hospitals, and often when she arrived there it was necessary for her children to be taught the doctrine of other churches because of the background of the institute she was using. Go with me for a minute and talk with a branch president in an Indian village in Guatemala. And hear as he explains how five of his nine children died before they reached the age of five because of poor nutrition poor sanitation, resulting in dysentery, pneumonia, and other illnesses that took their life. Walk with me into the home of a 
family, the husband serving as the Sunday school superintendent of that branch, the wife the primary president, a family living in a rural area in Bolivia, an Indian branch. And there see their six-week-old infant daughter who is dying of starvation because their meager eight dollars a month is unable or makes them unable to provide food for their baby. Go with me to a large hospital newly built in Tonga, ready to provide needed services to members and non-members alike in that area. A hospital built by that government, the government of Tonga. But there are no nurses with which to staff that hospital so that no services can be provided to members of the church or non-members living in that nation. Oh, we could multiply these examples by the hundreds and see the suffering, the sorrow, the tragedy of life in areas far from here, not brought on by sin and transgression. These people are not handicapped by lack of intelligence by ability or industry, but people who are handicapped by extreme poverty, by lack of education, by lack of opportunity, and how they reach out to us and ask, how can you help us to enjoy the blessings that you in America take for granted? Brothers, how do we solve the problems that exist in these faraway places. Places where the church is growing more rapidly than any other part of the earth. South and Central America, the islands of the Pacific, and areas of Asia. Where baptisms are not measured in the tens or the hundreds, but in the thousands. These people come into the church and need our help. They need our assistance with help, with every phase of life. And what wonderful people they are. You can't help but love them as you meet with them and talk with them. You want to do something to reach out and lift them up and share with them the blessings that we have in such great abundance. Well, brethren, the time does not permit for me to go into detail on the programs that are being developed under the inspiration of the First Presidency of the Church. But we've begun to send forth now professionally trained men and women who go forth with the call of a missionary to reach out and lift up our brothers and sisters, our Heavenly Father's children. A physician has gone to Samoa to assist those people. A nurse to Tonga. Nurses have been called who will soon be leaving for Guatemala. And others will go forth in a similar manner to other nations and places to assist those with such great needs. What will these health missionaries do? First of all, a guiding principle will be that in the tradition of the word of wisdom, that emphasizes health education and disease prevention. These health missionaries will go out to work with priesthood leaders so that in a priesthood correlated program through the home teacher, through the Relief Society, through the visiting teachers, we can take into the homes of these families whose needs are so great those temporal blessings that will help them to progress spiritually. These health missionaries will go out to assist families with better nutrition, teaching them how to eat properly, better care of children and babies so that they won't perish from diarrhea and respiratory infection, care of the expectant mother, sanitation around the home, oh, all of these things that are so easy to understand if there's just a teacher. But brethren, I emphasize that their only problems 
that their problems are not only health. What if we were to assist that branch president and his wife in Guatemala, in this small Indian branch, so that five of those nine children had not died? His income was $12 a month, which he derived from a small cornfield. He couldn't have fed those children, even though we have the means and the ability to prevent their death unless there can be a concomitant economic growth, better agriculture methods, use of fertilizers, irrigation, better seeds, better plants, unless this is a balanced program, we're not going to be effective in meeting the needs of these choice and wonderful people who bear testimony like you and I that God lives and that Jesus is the Christ and that we have a living prophet upon the earth today. Oh, brethren, I challenge you to prepare for missionary calls, not only to go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ at home and abroad, but to go forth in love and brotherhood, using your professional and vocational skills to reach out and lift up physicians and dentists and nurses, social workers, agricultural specialists, people with knowledge in marketing and home industry. All of your skills and talented or talents are needed if we're going to be a blessing to these, our brethren, whose needs are so great. Brethren, I pray that you might have the vision of this great program, that you might prepare yourself, that you might receive such a calling and go forth to provide this great service. And this is my prayer as I bear my testimony to the divinity of this great Latter-day work. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen.